Hi everyone, welcome to Julie Reads Her Bookshelf. I'm Julie. Uh, for those of you who are new to this channel, this is a channel where I read through every single book that is unread on my bookshelf until I reach zero. Today I want to talk a little bit about a booktube event that's coming up and that's March of the Mammoth. Now I haven't really done any events uh, being relatively new to booktube, but also the, the theme, uh, the project for this channel doesn't lend itself well to events because I am confined by the books that are unread on my bookshelf. I can't just go out and buy new books uh, before I've read through all of my unread ones. So part of uh, participating in events is to be flexible and to be open to reading new things. And unless that new thing is one of the unread books on my bookshelf, uh, I can't really do that. But one book to event that I can participate in is March of the Mammoth, because as it turns out, I have plenty of mammoths on my bookshelf. Big books that I bought that I just have not yet committed to, that I need a little bit of a nudge. Now, generally speaking, mammoths don't intimidate me. Uh, big books are something that I really enjoy. I really love that sensation of uh, time passing in my life, but also time passing in the book at the same time. And you really feel like you grow and evolve with the book and with the characters in that book. Uh, and so I love a good chunker. Uh, so for whatever reason, I still have all these um, big uh, mammoths on my bookshelf that I still haven't read. So uh, I'm using March as a little bit of a kick up my rear end to try and get through some of these. Uh, with my usual pace of reading, I can, and, and also <laughs> my very busy work life, um, I can normally get through about 1000 or 1200 pages uh, in a month. So I think with the with the format of March of the Mammoth, if I commit to one book, that book is about all I will get through in a month. So I'll I'll talk a little bit about the options on my unread bookshelf for March of the Mammoth, and then um, I'll I'll tell you what my pick is at the very end. So uh, some of you who watched my earlier videos might know that in 2023, I am looking to uh, read more Victorian literature. So this is the year of me reading the Victorians. So I have two Victorian mammoths on my bookshelf. The first one is Vanity Fair by William Thackeray. Now, this particular version I have, which is the Wordsworth edition, uh, I uh, this one is under 800 pages just under uh, but I actually hate these editions I've realized I have a lot of them unread just behind me and one of the reasons why I've been put off on reading them is actually because the paper quality is not great and the margins are considerably smaller than some of the vintage and penguin editions so I'm in the process of slowly swapping out the few of these that I have and replacing them with editions that I actually will read uh, and I'm only replacing them with editions that I find in little free libraries or in charity shops for very cheap because I don't, I don't like the idea of me buying brand new books to replace books that I haven't read. So uh, as it turns out, I have managed to find a almost brand new copy of Vanity Fair, the Penguin edition, which uh, has much better paper quality and much wider margins. And I found this at my local charity shop for $2. So I'm very happy to be replacing my former version with this version. And the benefit of this version is, of course, is that it is over 800 pages. So uh, coming in at just over 800 pages, this book technically qualifies for uh, March of the Mammoth. And I'm actually quite looking forward to reading it because I have watched the television adaptation a long time ago. Uh, and uh, I've sort of already forgotten about it. I've certainly forgotten enough about this book to, I think, really make it enjoyable for me to read it. So uh, I am looking forward to this one and I, um, I, I seem to recall the main character in, uh, in the television adaptation was quite fabulous. So I can't wait to read what she's like in the book itself. The second big book that I've got from the Victorian era is Charles Dickens, and this is Bleak House in the old penguin cover. Uh, and this one is a real commitment. I think it's perhaps over a hundred, a thousand pages. Let's have a look. 
9.90. So this is quite a large book. Uh, I don't know that much about Bleak House other than that there's the background of a court case uh, going on. Uh, I, I'm not super keen on Dickens. Uh, having said that, I, I'm basing that purely on me having attempted hard times a few times and also uh, reading A Christmas Carol, which I, I it's okay. It's okay. Um, so uh, Dickens is due for a little bit of a reassessment on my part to try and get, really get to know him better. So maybe this is an option for March of the Mammoth. Now, uh, moving away from the Victorians for a bit, we have two French chunkers that uh, are unread on my bookshelf. And look, generally speaking, big books do not intimidate me. I spent uh, a year reading all seven volumes of Proust in Search of Lost Time, and I did not bat an eye. But for whatever reason, these two French novels, oh, actually one of them is not a novel. These two French uh, books actually do intimidate me and I've been put off from starting them for a long time. Uh, I don't think I'll commit to either of them this year, but they are um, fairly high up on the list for the future, especially because I think uh, next year I might do a year of reading French, in which case both of these books uh, should be read. So the first one is the one you're all expecting, which is Victor Hugo's uh, Les Miserables. Uh, and this particular uh, translation is by Christine Doniger. And uh, I, I think I've been put off from this book because I know that there are lots and lots of digressions in it. And I don't particularly love that idea of a digression. I, I tend to think, you know, why don't you just do a bit of a hard edit, like kill your darlings and make the book work as a cohesive whole, uh, as opposed to taking the reader off on all these tangents. But that I'm, I'm coming uh, to this book with that view without having actually read much of it and only watched the musical. So perhaps I'll change my mind by the time I finish the book. Perhaps I'll enjoy the characters in the universe so much uh, that I'll appreciate the, the digressions in the book. And the second French chunker that I have is uh, the great Michel de Montaigne, which is the complete essays. Now, I, I think this book is, would be quite tough if I tried to read it in one go. So I think the approach I'm gonna take with this book is perhaps next year when I'm uh, doing my year of reading French, uh, I would have this book by the side of my bed and try and read through a couple of essays per day until I get through the entire thing. Um, I have read a little bit of Montagna before. Uh, I've got some of the Penguin Great Ideas um, selections of essays in here, and I liked them. That they, they were a little bit um, off-putting at times because of kind of his really misogynistic attitudes, but there's a degree to which I can perfect, I am perfectly happy to contextualize that because um, uh, I think Montagna is from the 1400s. 1572, he retired to, to, to write these. So I think, um, you know, given the time period, we can't expect the person to hold kind of modern values. But that, that it, it does mean that as you read through his essays, some of the attitudes do kind of make you pause a little bit and just sort of push yourself past them and, and look beyond them to, to see what's good about these essays. I really did like the few selections um, that I read from the Penguin Great Ideas range. So, uh, and I do want to actually go through all of these essays. So let, let's have a, um, let's have a go at it next year, <laughs> but not, not next month. We can't talk about mammoths without talking about at least one big Russian novel. And the one I want to talk about is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Uh, now, I have actually read Anna Karenina, but this book is on my unread shelf because I haven't read this particular translation. The last translation I read was uh, the Maud translation. And uh, I read that oh, uh, probably right after I graduated high school. So it's a, it's a long time ago by now. So I, I really want to reread Anna Karenina. I don't think I'll do it as part of March of the Mammoths just because I'm, I'm fresh coming off a year of reading Russian. So I want to give it some time before I read another Russian novel. But this one is relatively high up on my list of big books to read because 
Um, I remember really loving these. I read War and Peace last year and I think I liked War and Peace better, but honestly, Anna Karenina was, uh, I read Anna Karenina so long ago that I'm not sure I'm giving it a fair comparison. So I wanna really have a think about these two books, uh, having both read them relatively recently. So I'll probably attempt this book either later the next year, uh, later this year or early next year. On the more contemporary stuff, I have two contemporary novels that are over 800 pages long. And the first one, I actually have no idea how it came to my possession. Um, and this is Wally Lamb's I Know This Much Is True. Now, I know nothing about this book. I don't remember buying it. <laughs> and this is, this is a secondhand copy. And I have no idea how it ended up on my shelf. I suspect what's happened is I've um, probably stolen this book from one of my former housemates. So I'm sorry if I did that. Um, I don't know if I want to keep this book, mostly because I don't know anything about it. So I don't have an, uh, an urge to read it. But uh, so if you have read this book, please let me know if I should keep it or if I should unhaul it. Um, because at the moment, it's sort of edging towards the chopping block. The next contemporary novel I do want to read, uh, and that's Eleanor Catton's The Luminaries. And I'm pretty sure this book is set in New Zealand. So I'm looking forward to actually reading a book a bit closer to home being in Australia, New Zealand is kind of like our Canada. <laughs> so, uh, and I've heard really, really good things about this book and it sounds absolutely fascinating. So, uh, and it is quite a chunk of, uh, the version I've got is a nice little hardback. So, um, I think I might try this book either later this year or early next year, because I, I've been reading lots of classics lately. Uh, and I want to actually try and read a bit more contemporary fiction. And I have a few on my bookshelf, including this one, uh, that I still need to read. So uh, I'm going to try and do a bit more contemporary fiction, to, particularly in the next couple of months. So uh, what is my pick for <laughs> March of the Mammoth? So I have a pretty clear idea at the moment that I want to read Vanity Fair, because I think it's uh, a relatively small mammoth. It's Victorian, so it's uh, it's a twofer in terms of my theme for the year as well as my theme for next month. Uh, and also it just kind of sounds like a fun read. So uh, I think I'm gonna go for Vanity Fair next month. So let's see how I go. Thanks, BookTube.